A discovery by Spanish scientists promises to solve a long-standing archaeological mystery in the search for the lost temple of Hercules. Wait till you hear this. Researchers from the University of Seville and the Andalusian Institute of Historical Heritage claim to have uncovered the possible location of the lost Hercules of Cadiz Temple, a building thought lost for centuries. Using the latest radar technology and aerial photographs, researchers located traces of a large Roman and Phoenician building in the Spanish town of Sancti Petri, close to Cadiz, thought to be the prize temple of Hercules. Milagros Alzaga Garcia, head of the Andalusian Institute's Center for Aquatic Archaeology, said about the discovery, he said, The documentary sources we analyzed, the archaeological information together with the images obtained with the digital models of the site, led us to believe that this could be the mythical temple of Hercules. The temple was first mentioned in classical Greek and Latin sources, such as Starbo and Philostratus of Athens which described the building on the dockside as a large Phoenician complex that was accessed by crossing two columns. Hercules to the Romans or Heracles to the Greeks, a well-known figure from popular culture, was worshipped by both the ancient Greeks and Romans as the god of strength and heroes. The Romans adapted the Greek hero's iconography and myths from their literature and art under the name Hercules. In later Western art and literature, and in popular culture, Hercules is more commonly used than Heracles as the name of the hero. Hercules is a multifaceted figure with contradictory characteristics, which enable later artists and writers to pick and choose how to represent him. In Rome and the modern West, he is known as Hercules, with whom the later Roman emperors, in particular Commodus and Maximian, often identified themselves. The Romans adapted the Greek version of his life and work essentially unchanged, but added anecdotal detail of their own, some of it linking the hero with the geography of the central Mediterranean. Details of his cult were adapted to Rome as well. Hercules was the greatest of all Greek heroes, one who surpassed all men of whom memory from the beginning of time was brought down and account, a god in the sky manifested in human form with extreme strength and violent passions. Heracles was the epitome of bravery and masculinity in the ancient world, and the most notable champion of the Olympian order, which he staunchly protected from various attacks in the plasmatic manifestation. Hercules was indiscriminate, lacking composure, and destroyed lives randomly. Despite this, and because of how he was perceived in the heavens above, he was seen to do more good than harm, keeping away the worst times that had went before. They saw him more of a protector than a destroyer, but this rage, like all other gods, was simply a plasmatic pattern of randomness against the formation of a Taurus field. Hercules even takes hold of the planetary body from Atlas to become the squatter man in the manifestation before Atlas returns, and Hercules again becomes one of the two along with Athena. Hercules' role as a culture hero, whose death could be a subject of mythic telling, was accepted into the Olympian pantheon during classical times. This created an awkwardness in the encounter with Odysseus in the episode of Odyssey 11 called the Nukia, where Odysseus encounters Hercules in Hades. And next, I caught a glimpse of powerful Heracles, his ghost, I mean. The man himself delights in the grand feast of the deathless gods on high. Around him, cries of the dead rang out, like cries of birds scattering left and right, and horror as on he came like the night. There is evidence of Hercules' worship in myth in the Latin epic poem The Aeneid. In the eighth book of the poem, Aeneas finally reaches the future site of Rome where he meets Evander and the Arcadians, making sacrifices to Hercules on the banks of the Tiber River. They share a feast, and Evander tells the story of how Hercules defeated the monster Caucus and describes him as a triumphant hero. Translated from the Latin text of Virgil, Evander stated, Time brought to us in our time of need the aid and arrival of a god, where there came that mightiest avenger, the victor, Hercules. 
proud with the slaughter and the spoils of threefold Grayon, and he drove the mighty bulls here, and the cattle filled both valley and riverside. In Roman mythology, although Hercules was seen as the champion of the weak and a great protector, his personal problems started at birth. Juno sent two witches to prevent the birth, but they were tricked by one of Alcomenes' servants and sent to another room. Juno then sent serpents to kill him in his cradle, but Hercules strangled them both. In one version of the myth, Alcomenes abandoned her baby in the woods in order to protect him from Juno's wrath, but he was found by the goddess Minerva who brought him to Juno, claiming he was an orphan child left in the woods who needed nourishment. Juno suckled Hercules at her own breast until the infant bit her nipple, at which point she pushed him away spilling her milk across the night sky and so forming the Milky Way. They saw this in the sky. In art and literature, Heracles was represented as an enormously strong man of moderate height, a huge eater and drinker, very amorous and generally kindly but with occasional outbursts of brutal rage. His characteristic weapon was the bow but frequently also the club possibly immortalized in geoglyphs found as far as England. In the dying embers of the god's manifestation, Hercules became cloaked in a storm of plasmatic auroras, destroyed by the lightning of Jupiter. The people witnessed as the event takes place, unfolding before the eyes of the earthlings. From these happenings, stories emerge that can only be answered by the squatter man question. There are many stories and tales in the existence of Hercules. They saw it in the sky. Our only motivation is the search for truth and we aim to open the door of enlightenment as we begin to wake up across the world. Introducing channel memberships for the Lost History Channel. As YouTube continues to suppress our channel, we thought we would explore alternative revenue portals and the memberships could be a crucial tool for our survival on the platform. Become a member of the Lost History Channel and unlock access to membership only perks like badges, emoji, and other aspects of the channel that doesn't always make it into production. Here we can share updates with our members and show little snippets of our pre-produced content before it goes public. Join one of our pre-loaded tiers and show your support for the channel that refuses to go away. With your support, the journey continues. Now, wait till you hear this.